Welcome, welcome. Today we're going to talk about bonds and present value techniques because it's important to understand the concept of present value. A bond is a very important area, very heavily tested, and there's a whole bunch of different nuances, big word for me, that relates to bonds. What is a bond? A bond is a borrowing agreement whereby the issuer of the bond promises to pay you, the purchaser of the bond, a certain amount of money after a certain period of time at a certain interest rate. So that is what the purchaser of the bond, or the issuer rather of the bond, is promising to give to the purchaser. So I've got all this extra money, what should I buy? Debt or equity, debt is bonds, equity is stock. I buy debt, which would be bonds. So I'm buying a company's bonds. Now there's a bunch of different terms that go along with the bonds that we have to understand. You'll see in your notes it says a bond is a borrowing agreement in which the issuer promises to repay a certain amount of money, which is called the face or the par value, to the purchaser after a certain period of time called the term at a certain interest rate and we're going to look at a couple of different ones called the effective rate or the yield or the market and all of those mean the same the effective rate the yield the market you can call me Bob or you can call me you know like that so that's what we're looking at as far as the rate so let's say for example we have a five-year term bond so it's five year it's a term bond, which we'll learn later. It's $1 million. And let's say, for example, that the interest rate is 8%. And that is called the stated rate. Now, the stated rate means that's how much they're going to pay me. That means they're going to pay me interest of 8% of a $1 million dollars or $80,000 a year. So there, basically, I'm saying, hey, I'm going to loan you a $1 million. You are going to pay me 8% a year for $80,000 a year for the next five years. So five year term, million dollars. The million dollar is the par value, face value, maturity value, that's how much. Now, that's great, and in this case, the stated rate is 8%. Let's say the effective, called the market, called the yield, is also 8%. Then everything's great. That means I'm gonna loan you a million, you're gonna pay me eight, and I wanna earn eight. So that's cool, everything's great. That's when these two are the same, which means there's no discount or premium. However, let's say that I could take my money, put it in the bank, hypothetically, and I could earn 10%. I could earn 10% on that money. If I could earn 10% on the money, why would I loan you my money at 8%, right? I mean, I don't want 8%, I want 10%. Well, you can't just take the bond, scratch out the eight and make it a 10. So instead, what we're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to issue me the bonds. They're gonna pay me 8% in cash. That's the stated rate. That's called the stated, the face, the coupon, the nominal. So face, stated, coupon, nominal is similar. That's the stated rate. The yield is what I effectively want to yield. If I want to earn 10%, then what will happen is you better sell it to me for less than a million dollars. So what I'm really earning is I'm getting 8% in cash, plus I'm earning the difference between, let's say you issue it to me for 900000 it's going to grow to a million, so I'm earning 8% plus that extra 100000 over the next five years. That would be called a discount. Let's say in today's day and age, would I like 10%? Shaw. So instead, you issue it to yield only 6%. That means you're gonna pay me eight, but you only want me to earn six, therefore you're gonna charge me more than a million up front, called a premium. You're gonna charge me more, that way when I get my 80,000, really that 8% is really 60 of what I've earned, but 20 is the premium that I've already prepaid in a sense. So what we're doing is we're playing with that by having a discount or premium, that adjusts what I'm really earning. So those are a couple of terms, and we'll expand on this. I know it's tricky for some people, a lot of people generally, but as we go through it, do some examples, you will love it. You will become a bondage expert, I mean a bond expert. <laughs> Did I say that, bondage? Yeah, careful. All right, let's take the kids out of the room now. All right, let's look at some terms. A ter let's look at some terms, starting with term bond. What is a term bond? A bond that matures at the end of the term, hence the name term. So that means I'm gonna get a million dollars in five years at the end of the what? the term. A cereal bond. How often do you get up and have cereal? That's with a C. This is an S. But cereal means it matures in installments, right? So every morning you have cereal. Every six months maybe you get some money or every year. A cereal bond does this. If it's a million dollar five-year term bond, you don't give me any of that million until the end of the term. If it's a cereal bond, you might be giving me 
interest on a million the first year and then 200,000 of principal. So next year I'm earning interest on not a million but 800, then 600, then 400, then 200, then I get the rest. So that's called a serial bond. It matures in installments. We have debenture bonds, denture bonds. Those are bonds with bad teeth. No, debenture bonds are unsecured bonds. Those are not supported by any collateral. As opposed to like a mortgage bond is what? A bond that's secured by a company's mortgage or they have asset backed bonds, which are you know fixed assets of a company, things like that. We have the stated face coupon nominal. That is the rate printed on the bond represents the amount of cash. So Back in my example over here, what'd we say? The stated face nominal coupon is 8% of a million. That's 80,000 of cash interest you're gonna get. You're gonna get 80,000 every year. How much do we want you to earn? That depends on the effective stated or the effective yield or market. The next one says, carrying amount. The carrying amount would be your amortized cost. Now we've been hearing this term amortized costs in section one. Amortized costs would be face nut of unamortized discount or premium. That's your carrying value, carrying amount, your amortized cost. And what is it net of? Premium or discount. It says the face value of the bond plus the premium when the bond was issued above face value or minus the discount when the bond was issued below face value. So that's going to be plus the premium or minus the discount, which will make more sense once we go through our effective interest table, the effective interest method. We have effective rate yield market. That is the actual rate of interest the company is paying on the bond. When the bond is issued at a premium, effective rate is lower than the stated rate. Since the cash interest and principal repayment are based on the face, but the company actually received more money than that. When the bond is issued at a discount, the effective rate is higher. Huh? All right, come back over here. So, this is the stated rate, this is the effective market or yield. If these two are the same, no discount or premium. In this case, I want to earn more than this, you better issue it to me at a discount. If this versus this, you want to pay me only six, but I'm getting eight, you're going to charge me more up front, that's going to be a premium. So we're going to have to learn how to amortize these things out, but again, discount or premium, it's where the difference between the stated and the effective rate. Uh, convertible bond is a bond that is convertible into, for example, common stock. Um, callable bond is a bond which the issuer has the right to call or redeem prior to its maturity. So the bond may be callable, which is not really good for the investor because I have this bond, it's doing great, rates go crazy or rates drop really low, so I have a good bond, and they go, man, let's call it back because we can pay less. Uh, a covenant, this is a covenant which is a restriction. We have positive covenants, negative covenants. We'll see this a lot in the BEC exam. But a covenant is a restriction the borrower must agree to. So for example, maybe it's like if you go borrow money, may, and let, let's say the issuer of the bond, we might say, okay, you can't pay a dividend until the bonds are paid off. We might say you have to have life insurance in all of the officers in case somebody dies the company goes under, we lose our investment. So those are called covenants. Positive covenants are things you have to do. Negative covenants, things you cannot do. Those are called covenants or kind of restrictions. It says FASB ASC 825 provides that a company may elect the fair value option for assets and liabilities. That means that they can look at a financial liability like bonds and then they could elect that. It says, however, if they're not going to do that, then we're going to do the accounting that we're learning in this chapter. So if you did fair value, just get the investment, it goes up, income, it goes down, loss, you're done. We're not going to amortize all this stuff, discounts, premiums, and so on. What is uglier? Discounts and premiums. What's going to get tested? Amortizing discounts and premiums. So trust me, you need to know that. Hope for a fair value question, you're not going to see it. Okay, so that's what we're looking at as far as setting up just the background on bonds, trying to understand what the heck we're doing.